So I'm gonna 100% admit I was completely wrong about my prejudice towards Gymshark's clothing thinking they weren't any good. Let's talk about who Gymshark is, about the performance of their clothes, and my personal reason for actually liking the brand. Ben Francis was a 19 year old Pizza Hut delivery driver when he started the Gymshark supplement company. That's right, supplements, which obviously pivoted to this billion dollar apparel fitness brand that's headquartered in the UK. Why didn't I like it? Why didn't I like this brand? One word, drop shipping. If you don't know what drop shipping is, it's a popular way that people make money online by creating this storefront where you can brand your items, but then a customer buys it and it comes from a third party source that all they do is they slap a logo on it and send it to the customer. All of which is done without the storefront you bought it from having to hold inventory or actually developing the product themselves. Drop shipping isn't all bad, but from my experience, a majority comes from these crappy overseas resellers and the stuff of shitty quality. And it, it's probably the most requests that I get for products to be sent to me. And I'm going to tell you, I can tell when it's coming from a shitty third party drop shipping source. So now Gymshark did start out as a drop shipping company, but it was the now defunct supplement side because of what I knew about that side of Gymshark. I just made this assumption that that's how the clothing was. And that is where I've been wrong for many years. So using the revenue from the dropshipping side of the business, Ben Francis invested in creating custom fitness and bodybuilding apparel. I mean, this guy was in his parents' garage creating these clothing templates, sewing it himself, and screen printing the first product lines. And the whole reason he did this was because he wanted to create a custom fitness line because he didn't like anything that was out on the market. And that's where the best ideas and companies are born. You see a need and you fill that need. And they've come a long way from that sewing machine in his parents' garage to state-of-the-art development, design, and production. Their seamless line is pretty impressive, as is the unique stitching on some of their clothing. Is it completely innovative and breathtaking when you see it? I don't think so, but sometimes what makes a company different and the reason why you want to buy from them is just the company itself. And personally, I like what they're doing. I describe their clothing as incredibly functional, affordable, and surprising quality, and it looks great. Now, I said surprising quality because of how I also describe them as affordable. This combination, personally, to me, is my favorite part, which I'm gonna get to later. But back to the function of the product, my training is specifically CrossFit or cross training, which means I need comfort and flexibility for things like gymnastics movements and for their clothing to take abuse from things like hitting the ground when I'm doing burpees or the knurling from a barbell during Olympic lifts, which is a huge problem for a lot of shorts. I also hike, run, cycle, paddleboard, do jujitsu, Muay Thai, play rugby, just a whole bunch of things that require my clothing to take an absolute beating. I had a pair of $70 tough and durable shorts get ripped in half last time I played rugby. And I understand it can happen, but I wish I didn't pay that much for something that was supposed to withstand that kind of abuse. Just from the feel, Gymshark's products appear to be of similar build, maybe not perhaps the quality of material. However, $30 is a much more tolerable price point for me if it does get destroyed when I'm using it. And Gymshark has a wide variety of product lines that have something for just about anyone. So I asked them what shorts work best for CrossFit that can handle a barbell and all the movements that I talked about, and they said they're sports shorts, so that's what I got. And they have held up to the abuse. As for the shirts, personally, I don't need anything special since I rarely wear them when I work out anyway, but I do love their design and fit, and when I do wear them, they also need to hold up to abuse, which I believe they absolutely have. Like I did a sandbag workout and just no issues there. And if you look at me and you're curious, I'm six foot and I wear an extra large shirt and large shorts. Because another big thing for me is the size of my quads to fit in the short holes. Now that surprising quality to affordable price, the two characteristics that are most endearing to me personally, as Gymshark has grown, I haven't seen them take advantage of their consumer base by creating demand and increasing price. Why do I love this aspect of the company? It's purely for accessibility. I understand that fitness can be a very intimidating thing for a lot of people to get into. I also understand that the affordability of fitness clothing can be a issue for a lot of people. People love the stripes and the check mark and want to look good so they feel good when working out. This is a real thing and something companies spend a lot of money and time on researching to capture consumers. As someone who didn't grow up with a lot of money and was just flat as broke in college and law school, I'm very sympathetic to those who struggle with wanting to look good while they work out but struggle to afford it because I wore some 
cheap shit, some old stuff that I've just had for years and free shirts that I got back then. So Gymshark has done this incredible job of marketing to their consumer base, utilizing what was then at the time, innovative influencer and social media marketing to brand their clothing as a stylish choice for fitness, while also keeping their pricing under $30 for most of the things. And the highest cost I've seen in the menswear side is like 60 bucks for a hoodie. Because of the low customer acquisition costs using influencer marketing, as well as not having brick and mortar storefronts, their operational costs can remain much lower than other companies that do those things, which we as a consumer benefit from by not having to pay the increased costs to maintain it. And I'm sorry, ladies, as you can probably tell, I am a man who doesn't venture on your side of the clothing section, and honestly, it just intimidates the hell out of me. Your sizes are all weird numbers and they aren't consistent. Like why isn't a seven always a seven in different styles? I, what the hell's going on over there? So if you're a woman who's used Gymshark and you have some input, please leave a comment to share your experience with others. Anyway, don't get me wrong. Is it the highest quality and best performing clothing in my closet? No, it's not. But as always, you need to look at the trade-off of price to quality. And I think Gymshark's apparel far exceeds the quality to price relation. Now, no company escapes an evaluation without some controversy. I wasn't even aware of this until I asked people on Instagram what they wanted to know about the company Gymshark. Body positivity. So a woman posted on Instagram her body and Gymshark clothing, of which Gymshark supported the post. The issue people had was the body type of the woman in relation to the fitness ideal Gymshark has created. Listen, if this is the biggest controversy that they have to deal with thus far, who gives a shit? But I'm gonna give you my two cents. I think body positivity is completely necessary and healthy as you work towards your health goals. I don't like the promotion of unhealthy lifestyles as I've stated numerous times on this channel. I mean, we're in a freaking cardiovascular pandemic with no end or solution in sight, and it's much better to promote exercising and eating right. But there is this mental health aspect of all of this. A lot of people struggle and stop their journey back to health because of this lack of body positivity as well as people who are fit who struggle with body dysmorphia. You can feel helpless at times, like there's just no way out, so you're just not gonna do it. For me, learn to be happy with how you look in the mirror, but also understand that you deserve to improve yourself in every aspect of your life, which also does include a healthier body. There comes a point in our lives that we need to understand to put our feelings aside and understand the health requirements because our blood work shows nothing but facts. But let's not kid ourselves. From a business standpoint, it is smart for Gymshark to promote this body positivity. If you can capture customers at any stage of their fitness journey and they love the clothing, you're gonna capture that customer for life because then they gotta buy clothes when they slim down. Like when I cut my waist from 36 to 32 and increase my shirt size from large to extra large, my closet got a complete overhaul and I was looking for new brands just to take my money. In the end, support the brand with your wallet and then let that speak for itself. Now back to Gymshark as a company. They provide what's called a transparency report outlining all their initiatives as a brand, which includes supportive and healthy work environment, equal opportunities for their employees, and sustainability in their manufacturing process. They also do something pretty cool and they list out all of their suppliers within this document in their supply chain. And my assumption, it's likely to avoid that sweatshop controversy, similar to what Nike constantly deals with. So. In the end, is this brand perfect? No, but for me, it has some incredible qualities and they're attempting to do everything right to create a brand that promotes fitness, community, health, and a great place to work for their employees. And I gotta tell you, I am so surprised by the performance, quality, and durability of their products and I wish I would've bought them sooner. Also, can we get more of that Legacy logo? I love that thing. That wraps up this review. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next one.